in the name of Allah, the most beneficial and merciful. Assalamu alaikum. I'm here, Muhammad Jamal Khan, lecturer in Botany, University of Education, Lahore. Today, we will discuss a new topic that is related to a classification. As you know, classification is the arrangement of plants into groups or subgroups on the basis of some attributes, on the basis of similarities, which is referred as classification. So these plants differ from each other in different attributes for example in size in shape and color so they are classified into different groups and subgroups on the basis of their characters and this system we refer as system of classification identification of all living organism is based on their body character they are placed in separate group when their kind and uh, structure uh, and their mode of living are studied so the characteristics of the organism are very important and play a very important role in their classification for example we when we talk about uh, plants one considered its length of sepal color of petals size of filament position of ovary these are the attributes these are the characteristics on the base of which we classify plants into groups and subgroups similarly there are some other major criteria for example, their shape, their internal organization, internal structure, in a refer as anatomy, panology, carology, embryology. These are the different branches or these are the different studies related to plant on the base of which we classify into uh, various groups and subgroups. So here we have a hierarchy. To classify the plants into different groups and subgroups as you shown in this presentation first of all we're starting from the smallest uh, group in which the similar individual that can bred with one another they are referred as species so they resemble with one another very uh, closely. The different groups of plants as you shown in the presentation, these are different uh, groups uh, started from smallest one species, then genus, then family, then order, then class, division, kingdom. These all are different units so this is one the smallest one and then this is one the biggest one genus are big bigger than species and family is bigger than genus so these are the different taxa so individual these are all ours taxa so first of all we, dis, uh, we discussed species now species with similar characteristics are placed into genus here and many genera collectively to form a family and then many families with certain similar characteristics are grouped into a order and in the end a group of similar orders belong to a class and then many closely related classes constitute or form a duian 
and many divisions a division is also called as a phyla and when many divisions and phyla they collectively co combine to form ultimately a kingdom so why classification is, is important so some there are some important points regarding the importance of classification so classification uh, provides some uh, benefit that is uh, mentioned here in this slide as it uh, provide uh, uh, phenomena for cataloging cataloging the future specimens of species uh, so it provide a organized system for uh, botanist or for plant scientist the second one uh, uh, through classification uh, one uh, uh, one identify the interrelationship between different uh, plants uh, or uh, it uh, it is the scientific method to find out the interrelationship of different plants so this is the most appropriate and suitable method for plant identification and it provide us information uh, to uh, invent the evolutionary history or to detect the evolutionary history of plant kingdom and the last one uh, it provide a uh, available it uh, provide us a data or it provide us uh, information available uh, very useful information and uh, and that uh, provide an integration or on the base of that available information we manipulate uh, different uh, perspective related to uh, plant kingdom so this is the system of uh, classification that is based on three systems first one is artificial system the second one is natural system and the last and third one is phylogenetic uh, system so first of all we discuss about the artificial system in this system only one or few characters are considered for classification due to which closely uh, related plants are, are placed in different groups and unrelated plants are placed in uh, in different groups so because of the presence or absence of a particular characters so this is the great uh, defect of this system that the, the closely related plants are widely separated from each other and placed in different groups otherwise this it is a good system for easier identification of unknown plants and the linear system is one of the example of this the second one is a natural system uh, in this system the plants are classified on the basis of their related character or the on the basis of their uh, available information at that time so the characters of uh, um, reproductive organs structural relationship and other important characters are considered in this system so in this system the plants are first classified into a big groups and these are further divided and sub divided into smaller and smaller groups and the smallest group of uh, this uh, system is called species so this is referred to as natural classification system the last one is phylogenetic classification system the base of this system is only a evolutionary uh, sequence or evolutionary uh, available information on the behalf of which we classify organism uh, according to phylogenetic classification so now we will discuss about a brief history uh, regarding the classification of plants so first of all we have a theophrastus uh, a greek uh, botanist and he also called as the father of the botany and he is considered habit as an essential character for example uh, he classified classified plants into four groups on the basis of their habits like they are shrubs herbs or trees and uh, somewhat they separated according to the flowering and non flowering plants the other one is Carlius Linnaeus, a Swedish taxonomist, known as the father of taxonomy. And in his 
book Spaceship Land Trader, and in 1753 he created a sexual system of classification that were divided planters to 24 classes based on number, union, and length of stamens. Scandry grouping with these uh, classes was based on gynoecium. Yeah, it it mostly uh, the major focus of uh, Carlius Linnaeus is its uh, is the sexual or the reproductive part of the plant on the base of which it classify a plant. So the next one is Robert Brown. Uh, due to uh, extensive uh, or due to uh, high loaded, uh, to prevent um, I, I'm, uh, this presentation from a high loaded presentation, uh, I simply uh, give you lit very little detail of all these uh, scientists in the, the history section of classification system so next one is robert bruno he discovered the nucleus and but it is also differentiated the angiosperm and uh, gymnosperm plants the next one is william hofsmith he discovered the phenomena of alternation of generation in the lower plants william hitcher he introduced phylogenetic trend in cl plant classification bentham and hooker he gave their own classification system uh, and this classification system uh, basically, uh, he classify uh, he the plant kingdom comprises about 97 thousand species of flowering and seeded plants, and these pl uh, place th uh, these flowering plants in one division, Spermatophyta. So this division is uh, divided into two, two subdivisions. One is, one is Angiosperm, the other one is Gymnosperm. Similar, and uh, the next scientist is Charles Darwin. He introduced the concept of evolution in classification the next scientist is uh, here I repeat the presentation so William Hitcher he introduced a phylogenetic trend in the plant kingdom classification uh, Charles Edwin he modified the Bentham and Hooker classification system that is based on uh, two subdivisions and just from and genosperm and made this phylogenetic the other one is Adolf Engler and Carl Parental their system of classification is based on uh, phylogenetic consideration. Here is also this slide also showed this. The next one is he introduced the five system, uh, five uh, classification system, and removed fungi, algae, and bacteria from plants. The next one is Margulis such words working. They modified the criteria of classification of five kingdom system. And now the most uh, prominent and the most important uh, classification system that we adopted today or we can also say that uh, these are the current system of classification from which the the most prominent is Takhtajan system of classification so Takhtajan is a Armenian uh, botanist and he was interested in uh, the morphology of flowering plants and palabotany and the floral uh, of uh, Caucasus. So he developed uh, uh, his uh, classification scheme for flowering plants and this classification emphasized phylogenetic relationship between plants. So uh, this system uh, didn't become known to botanist uh, after uh, till 1950 after uh, in or in late 1950 uh, he began a correspondence and collaboration with prominent american botanist arthur conquest and so he presented uh, his uh, classification system that we called as takhtajan system of classification so here is the introduction that uh, uh, that I already told you. So, Takhtajan system of classification is basically uh, of Basse Heller tradition, which consider all evidence from different fields, including morphological uh, characteristics, anatomical, embryological, cytological, panological, palabotanical, chemical, and ultra structure evidence uh, while classifying the flowering plants or angiosperms. So basically, Takhtajan divided plants into two classes. One that is referred as uh, Mangl Magnoliopsida 
and the other one is as Liliopsida. So Magnoliophyta or uh, Magnoliopsida is referred as dicotyledon plants and Liliopsida is referred as monocotyledon plants. So according to him uh, both the Magnoliopsida and the Liliopsida uh, Magnoliopsida is considered primitive and uh, Liliopsida to have been derived from uh, Magnolialis under Magnoliopsida. So the two classes have been further divided into 10 subclasses, 7 under the Magnoliopsida and 3 under the Liliopsida which are as follows. So under Magnoliopsida these are the 7 classes, Manolidae, Renancolidae, Hamamilidae, Caryophyllidae, Dalaniidae, Rosiidae, and Asteridae. So similarly in Liliopsida, here we have Alismatidae, Liliidae, and Aricidae. So these are the classes of Takta uh, Jan system of classification. So here are some important features uh, that I present in a very briefly form. So number one, uh, the important features of the uh, uh, system of classification is that woody plants are primitive than herbaceous plants. Simply, uh, it's not too much complex or uh, uh, statement. So deciduous woody plants are considered evolved from evergreen plants. Similarly, the xylem fiber, that is the part of xylem, evolved from tracheids. Uh, to form uh, libriform fibers or through fiber tracheids. Similarly, these are the some anatomical uh, characteristics or, uh, that we mentioned here. Tralacunar uh, tra or pentalacunar nodes are primitive to unilacunar nodes. Alternate leaf arrangement is primitive while parallel is most advanced simply. Uh, it describes the features that mentioned in the Tartajan system of classification stomata which subsidies cells are primitive than those which uh, have which, uh, which lacking subsidies cells so there are two forms of uh, inflorescence one is cymose racemose Fl cymose fluorescence is primitive then racemose and similarly flower with an indefinite or variable number of flower plots are primitive Pollen with unsculptured exine is primitive to sculptural pollen. So, Apocarpus gynoecium is primitive. Ovules are primitive. Bitagmic uh, ovules are primitive than unitagmic ovules. While anatropus ovule is most primitive. These are the uh, these are the position of ovules on the base of which uh, they, he considered uh, the primitive and modern uh, plant. Eight nucleated polygonum type female gametophyte is more uh, most primitive female gametophyte uh, that is referred to as the uh, further referred to as ovule embryo. On the base of these structure, he classified the plant into primitive or, or, or ancient and uh, modern plants. Create a differentiation between primitive and modern plants. Mesogamic and chalazogamic conditions have evolved from progamic conditions among fruits many seed follicles is most primitive these all are some uh, anatomical and uh, morphological uh, basis on the on the base of which uh, basically these are related to a, a reproductive part of plant especially flower so on the basis of these attributes and characteristics they he classified uh, or he dif differentiated the plant into a primitive form or into a modern form so these are some merits of the system of classification in which he mentioned that the dicot or magnoliopsida has been discussed prior to monocots so the families are small homogeneous units made up of closely related genera so small homogeneous units that um, uh, made up closely related genera and show important so simply it indicates that uh, uh, families are small homogeneous units and these are composed of closely related genera. Uh, 
The other one is the Dacords begin with Magnolialis, which is highly satisfactory uh, in 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 that purpose. That are the because these are the universally considered to be the most primitive living angiosperm. So uh, according to this system, angiosperm are monophyletic. So monocots have originated from dicots. So angiosperm are treated as one division, and that is Magnolio phyta or magnio uh, magno leoxida similarly uh, among monocots alis uh, metellus which are considered to be the most primitive living monocots that have been uh, placed in the starting point which is satisfactory so this is the merit of uh, this uh, classification system so angular and parenchyal division of the course into two traditional groups, uh, Archiclemidae and uh, Metaclemidae, has been abolished in this system. This is the, uh, the uh, most uh, important point uh, by eliminating these two uh, traditional groups of angular and parental. So problems such as uh, monophyllal and or polyphyllal interrelationships of diacords and monocords. A primitive position of uh, magnolialis, the scanty nature of anemophilus uh, families, which reduce unisexual flowers, uh, such that have been satisfact uh, satisfactorily settled. So uh, it indicates that uh, the monocots and dicots are positioned uh, in a very uh, proper manner, so, uh, so they are uh, classified in a very uh, satisfactory. Uh, perspective so these are the uh, demerits of takhtajan first of all uh, the main objection of takhtajan system is his uh, derivation of monocotyledon from the stock of ancestral uh, to the nymphialis so this is the main uh, drawback of this classification uh, the, uh, of the uh, takhtajan classification system the extremely narrowly defined taxa in this uh, system has resulted in the unwarranted splitting of related groups. It means that a very uh, restricted criteria are used for defining uh, taxa in this system. So it caused unwanted splitting of related groups. So here we have a, a very brief summary of, uh, of this whole topic. Uh, so in the beginning, we classify the plants or the classification is very restricted to the morphology or the shape or structure of plants so on the base of their shapes and structure we classify plants so after that uh, later classification uh, evolve itself and uh, we classify the plants on the base of their uh, reproduction and uh, basic physiology so in the uh, reproduction we refer as flower uh, so the different uh, parts of flower uh, that are based for classification suppose we have sepals petal, pa uh, petals and androsium gynosium and their arrangement their shapes and uh, these are all the attributes on the behalf of which uh, we classify the plants so these all are, uh, are actually flower is the reproductive part so we say that uh, the classification is based on reproduction the next one is basic physiology uh, as you know physio in physiology plant shows different uh, physiological process so the on on the base of their physiology or the, on the base of their change in physiology patterns we classify the plants in or we a done classification with plants on base of these uh, physiological changes so now uh, in latest era or in this era we majorly classify plants or we majorly rely on genetics so although other uh, 
criteria or the parameters are also involved like their physiological characteristics or their reproduction or their mode of reproduction or their physiological patterns these are all are the mid, uh, are the parameters to evolve the classify or to classify the plant into various uh, groups but in addition to this we have an other parameter that is based on genetics their genetic makeup their uh, genes the number of genes activity of genes so these are the uh, you can say that uh, parameters on the behalf of which you classify plants the other one is that convergent evolution convergent evolution is that in uh, next slide we will discuss briefly discuss uh, this the convergent evolution the convergent evolution that the uh, changes in plants is uh, the sake of genetic makeup there is no involvement of environmental evolution so uh, convergent evolution may cause problem to classify plants because uh, according to definition of uh, this evolution <clears throat> it is the process uh, whereby organism knows uh, not closely related independently uh, independently evolve similar traits as a result of having to adopt to similar environment simply for understanding i say that it uh, uh, convergent evolution occurs when uh, two species from different lines from different groups or unrelated groups develop the same traits or features this happens uh, only when they live in a similar habitat and have to develop uh, solution to the same kind of problems so one must say uh, the convergent evolution creates problem uh, for uh, taxonomist uh, that using uh, evolutionary patterns in uh, taxonomy or or uh, categorize or classify various organism based on their relatedness so it often leads to incorrect relationship and false evolutionary prediction so in uh, modern era the phylogenetic classification that is uh, referred to as the classification that based on evolutionary patterns start off broad but become more specific as plant characteristics uh, and become more similar due to their uh, base theme line of uh, different levels of classification as kingdom phylum class order family and genus and species so the similarities are just the result of sake of genetic makeup or the similarity in genes or we can say that it is the genetic relatedness that not associated with the environmental factors or environmental uh, attributes so the evolution or the phylogenetic classification is associated with evolution 
and evolution on the sake of genetic makeup not on the sake of different environmental conditions here we have a very simple simplification of classification here we have so here we have a whole hierarchy of uh, classification here we have kingdom so in kingdom we have variety of plants this is the variety of plants we have so after that on a restricted uh, element we further classify the kingdom into a smaller group that is phyla so here we classify the plants the plants that have flowers and form ovules inside an ovary on the base of this character we further classify the kingdom into phyla and at this stage we have lesser number of plant as compared to kingdom after this we further classify these plants on the base of a character here we mentioned flowering plants that have embryos with two cotyledons so on the base of this characteristics on the base of this characteristic we further classify the plant into a class that is a smaller group as compared to a phylum after this we further classify the plants into a next category that is order so here we have a attributes like the members of the class of eudo uh, dicotyledons that have radially radi radially symmetry flowers with fan like arrangement of petals so in the bis we further have lesser number of plants as compared to class here we have so after this we further classify plant into a family and here we have the attributes that members of the order solanellus that have leaves alternately arranged and have pods berries with many seeds and that typically contains toxic chemicals so on the on the base of these attributes we further order into family okay after this we further classify into a smaller group that is genus membranes of the family solanaceae that have deeply lobed petals so on the base of these lobed petals we further classify uh, the plant into a smaller category that is genus and we have lesser number of plants in this category as compared to family so after this we have a least or we have a very smallest taxa in our classification that related to a species and here we classify the plants on the base of that a member of the genus of solanum that has edible tubers so on the base of this character we further classify the plant into a smallest taxa that is species so actually this is a classification uh, or a simple simplification 
uh, of a plant that related to a solanum tuberosa. So, in con concluding remarks, uh, I say that plants are extremely complex and diverse. And uh, there are millions of different plant species that is present in this world. Some that haven't been fully discovered and still studied and it's going on. So in order to continue the study and organization of plants, plant scientists or botanists must find a way to categorize the many different species. While all plants are made up of similar parts that are essential in maintaining their survival, such that plant possesses roots, stems and leaves. Actually, these all are vegetative parts and it is present in all plants. So, there are some differentiation between plants that make each plant different from other plant. So, most of the plants, they often look different. So these differences in characteristics are used to group plants into various taxas or groups. So which provide a way of classifying and therefore organizing plants. As while there are many ways to structure plant classification, from that a one way is to group them into a vascular and non-vascular plants. Suppose vascular plants are those plants that uh, use root and stem to take water and nutrients actually uh, these plants possesses vascular bundles xylem and phloem and non-vascular plants that doesn't exhibit xylem and phloem or vascular bundles so these plants don't use roots and stem so similarly we classify plants on the basis of their seed seed bearing plants and uh, those plants that have uh, so that we have a uh, spore bearing plants in seed bearing plants we further classify into two groups one is angiosperm and other one is gymnosperm as you know the angiosperm uh, as a flowering plants and all have seeds that are protected by an ovule while the gymnosperms are naked seed plants uh, that with the seed that are are not protected by an ovule. Similarly, we have uh, classified plants on their <coughs> nature, like uh, most of the plants are uh, grasses. They have herbaceous nature. Some plants are woody in texture or woody in nature so there are various uh, characteristics that uh, assist us to classify plants into uh, groups and taxas so uh, the classification system is continuously evolved and uh, it's still evolving However, in early, earlier, cell wall was the basis of classification for plant kingdom. But in two kingdom system, all organisms containing, containing cell wall were included in kingdom planting. So at that time, it includes bacteria, algae, fungi and plants. But after that, later in 
five kingdom system a new kingdom monera for uh, for, uh, for prokaryotes is formed so bacteria and cyanobacteria are placed in it similarity fungi are also given the status of kingdom so algae are placed in kingdom protista plant kingdom includes all multicellular photosynthetic organisms So after that, the classification of plants are based on vascular tissue and reproductive tissues. The plants lacking vascular tissues were placed in bryophyta, and the plants containing vascular tissues from from uh, tracheophytes. So after this, tracheophytes are divided into groups. Two groups. One is seed producing, as I already. Uh, told you the other one is non seed producing plants so non seed producing plants form the group of pteridophytes while seed producing plants form the group of embryophyta that later on uh, classify into a gymnosperm and angiosperm so the bryophyta itself is divided into two groups naked seed plants that are included in gymnosperm and the flowering plants are included in angiosperm so after that angiosperm are themselves divided into two groups one is monocot the other one is dicot so the classification is a evolving process and day by day we attain different attributes and characteristics on the basis of which we classify our plants and we classify our plants in a very good manner according to a knowledge that one have so this is all about for this lecture uh, i hope may allah protect us from every pandemic disease stay safe and healthy allah hafiz